All right, everybody. This video is going to be for the inflation project. It's going to cover some information about the CPI and about the calculations that you will need to complete your project. So first things first, the CPI itself stands for Consumer Price Index. This has not been around since the beginning of uh, time or the United States. This has only been around since uh, 1913. So when you're doing your project, you'll need to be sure to pick a date that is earlier, or sorry, more recent, later, rather, than 1913. Um, and the whole thing was created because they wanted to be able to track inflation. And, you know, as we've learned, inflation is a rise in the general price level over time. Well, what is the general price level? To know the general price level, you would have to know the prices of everything. But that's pretty difficult. So what we do is we try to measure the prices of as many things as we can, and we compile that information into what's called an index. And an index, whether this one or, a, you know, any index, stock index, whatever, is uh, something that measures a lot of things, but then compiles them into one stat. So we don't have to look at a ton of variables. All we have to do is look at the CPI, which is one number, and that tells us what we want to know. So since they um, want to measure the price level, but they can't reasonably find out the price of every single good and service uh, in the United States, what they do every month is they take a sample of U.S. goods and services, basically, and they use this, a, they call this a market basket approach. So the idea is we're not going to track the prices of every single good and service in the United States because that would be impossible, but we're going to pick a couple of things, not a couple of things, like a handful of things, not a handful of things, like a whole bunch of things that's a reasonable amount to measure, and we're going to put them into what's called an imaginary market basket. We're going to see how much that basket of stuff costs, and these are things that people buy all the time, like every, every month, like normal goods that people buy. We're going to see how much that basket costs in one month, and then the next month, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to see how much that same basket of the same goods would cost the next month. So we're looking at how prices change month to month, and uh, if we augment that information, we can see then how prices change over years at a time. So the market basket, just think of it as like a sample of things that U.S. consumers buy all the time, and we use this market basket to calculate the CPI, and the CPI tells us what the U.S.'s price level is. So there's a ton of different things, and they're very specific. You'd be amazed in the uh, CPI market basket, but overall there are eight main categories, and I have a graphic right here of the eight main categories. You can tell that they're not all given equal weight. You know, things like housing, because that's what Americans spend the most money on of their income, that's weighted at 25% of the CPI. Food is up there as well, because Americans spend a lot of their money on food. You know, things like uh, clothing and footwear, those are relatively minor expenses for Americans every month, and so that only gets about a 3% weight. So essentially, you know, the composition of the market basket is relatively similar month to month. You know, it's supposed to be, because you're comparing the prices of these same things every month. Now, it does change sometimes, but we'll talk about that close to the end here. So as you can tell, since the year 1946, um, the price level has risen, always. There has never been a time, mostly, maybe just right around like 2009, where the price level actually decreased. You can see that it's steadily rising and rising and rising and rising. And where this curve is rising more steeply, that signifies to us that the price level is changing more rapidly so that's going to be a greater rate of inflation. So the price level um, in about 1946 was less than 40. Today the price level is over 240. And so you might be at this point, you know, wondering what what are we measuring this with? Like what what's the y-axis there? Well, when you use the CPI, there are no like units, so we don't have any utils or we don't have any dollars or anything like that. These are just numbers that we use to measure the level of prices in the United States. So the only one that you really need to know is what's called the base year CPI. The base year is kind of like the reference year we've chosen. It's like the anchor. It's like home base. And the CPI for that year, and it's always a, you know, it's an arbitrary choice. It's just whatever economists want to choose. The base year CPI is always 100. And right now we use, as you can see on the previous graphic here, we use this base year of like average of 1982 to 1984. And you can see right around that time, that it's about a hundred. So that's the base year. Before the base year, prices are the price level is lower, and then after the base year, prices are higher. But that's not really going to come up too much in what you're doing. So 
we use CPI and economists use CPI and the government uses CPI to calculate the rate of inflation where the price level is rising over time or deflation where prices are falling over time. That's a little, that's much less common in the United States. It's more common in other countries, specifically Japan, but that's what deflation is, price level declining. Inflation is when the price level is increasing. Now, when we calculate the rate of inflation, you know, as you've put together by now, rate of inflation just means rate of change in prices, right? That's what we're talking about. So when we calculate a rate of inflation, it's all we have to do is calculate percentage change. And I'm not sure if you've calculated that in any other classes up to this point, but here's the formula. It's pretty straightforward. You take your new value and subtract your old value. And then whatever that gives you, you divide that by your old value again. And then multiply that by 100% to you know, turn it into a percentage. Multiply it by 100, basically. And so um, whatever your new value is, subtract your old value. Take that result, divide by your old value, and you know, multiply your, by 100 to give you not a decimal but a whole number. And that will give you the rate of inflation. That's the percentage rate of change in the price level over time. And over how much time is going to depend um, Typically, you know, inflation is measured month to month. You can also measure it year to year. Or we're going to do this in the project where you can measure it over like decades at a time. So it doesn't matter. Whatever the new and the old values are, that's what's going to tell you your rate of inflation. And those values, those new and old values, those are going to be CPI values. So we'll go ahead and do some examples here. So let's say that in the year 1948, the CPI was 24.1. Where did I get that? I have a table of every single CPI for every single month in the United States since the year 1913. When you do your project, you will use that table as well. Uh, in 1987, the CPI was 113. Now, like I said, we calculate this um, on a monthly basis, but they also have annual numbers. So you can see like from January 1st to December 31st, what was the rate of inflation for the entire year? Um, and in your project, you'll be able to use monthly values if you want to, or you can use the annual values. Um, it doesn't make it really any easier or harder. You're just using different numbers. So you're always going to look to the uh, BLS table for the CPIs. BLS stands for Bureau of Labor Statistics. They're the ones who keep track of this information and publish it publicly. So um, we want to calculate the rate of inflation from 1948 to 1987. All we need are those two CPI numbers from the first bullet there. So you take the new CPI, the 1987, that's the newer one, CPI, which is 113, and you subtract 24.1, that's your old CPI, that's the 1948 CPI, and then you divide that answer by 24.1 and then multiply it by 100%. So 113.6 minus 24.1 is equal to 89.5. Take that 89.5, divide it by 24.1, and that's going to give you 3.7136, multiply that by 100, I have it as 100%, but multiply by 100 and turn that into a percentage, and it's going to give you 371.36. So what that means is the rate of inflation between 1948 and 1987 was 371.36%. And so that, what that means is price is more than tripled between those two years and almost quadrupled. You know, 400% inflation, that would be a quadrupling of prices. So that's how you calculate the inflation rate new minus old divided by old, and then times 100 to turn it into a percentage. So uh, when it comes to calculating historical prices, we'll use the same um, CPIs as we did before, but at least for now, let's take a look at how to uh, calculate prices. So you start with the year A price, that's the price that you know, and then you multiply it by the year B CPI over the year A CPI. So you'll know both of the CPIs, you should, because you have a table of that information. And you multiply year B CPI divided by point a C, uh, year A CPI, and that's going to equal the year B price, and that's the one you don't know, the one you're trying to figure out. So let's look at an example. If a baseball bat cost $50 in 1987, how much would it have cost in 1948 dollars? So right now we're just plugging things in. The year A price we're going to say is $50, that's the price that we know. And so we've got our CPIs, one from 1948, one from 1987. We found those from the table earlier. And before you go ahead and calculate this, the first thing you want to ask yourself, it's a great way to check to make sure you're right or wrong here, is should the 1948 price be higher or lower than the 1987 price? And now remember what the CPI is measuring. 
CPI is measuring the price level. So the bigger the CPI, the higher the price level. That means things are more expensive. So when were things more expensive? 1948 or 1987? They were more expensive in 1987 because the CPI was 113, and in 1948 it was only 24. So we know that the 1948 price should definitely be lower than the 1987 price because prices, you know, as we saw, have risen over that time. And so if you do your calculations here and you get an answer that's greater than $50 for this question, you did something wrong. The answer you get, because we're going back in time here, should be lower, less than $50. So if you plug everything in, you get this. 50 times 24.1, that's the year B CPI, over 113.6, that's the year A CPI, that corresponds with the $50 there. If you do that math, it's going to give you $10.61, and always around to the nearest cent, the nearest hundredth, because we're dealing with dollars and cents here. And so $10.61 would be the price of this bat in 1948, and that's lower than 50, so you know you got it right. So that's how you calculate historical prices. Now, if you're going forward in time, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's just you always start with the price that you know at the beginning of the equation, and then whatever the CPI is for the year of the price that you know, that just goes on the bottom. The uh, CPI of the year that you don't know the price of, that goes on the top, and that's going to give you the year B price, which is what you're trying to figure out. So, if you get an answer, you can always, and you should always, go back and just prove that you, you got it right. So we established earlier that between 1948 and 1987, there was 371.36% inflation. Okay, fine. If you remember, you can use the inflation rate to calculate the future price. We've been doing this in some homeworks and stuff. And so you always take the current price, and you multiply that by parentheses 1, plus the decimal inflation rate, so you wouldn't multiply by 371, um, you'd multiply by the decimal form of 371%, and um, that's going to give you the future price. So if you plug all that in, and we have to ask this question again, if the bat cost 1061 in 1948, how much would it cost in 1987? Plug everything in, and you get $10.61 times parentheses 1 plus 3.7136. Again, that's 371% as, as a decimal rather than, a, than as a whole number. And if you do that, it comes out to $50.01, which is not exactly right. You know, you remember the bat cost $50 exactly in 1987, but this discrepancy is simply due to rounding error. So if it doesn't come out to be exactly, you know, correct, don't worry about that, but it should be close enough. That's just a good way to check your answer. Alternatively, you could just... Uh, rearrange the equation a little bit here, and you could do $50, which is the 1987 price, divided by 1 plus 3.7136, um, and that will give you the 1948 price. So you should get the same thing because you're just rearranging the equation there. So that's how to go ahead and do the calculations. Now CPI is excellent, but there are definitely some inherent limitations to it. First thing, it is an average of prices, not just in Wilmington, Delaware, not just in Chicago, not just in Los Angeles. It's an average of prices all over the United States. And as you guys know, you know, things cost more or less in different places. It's not as though the entire United States has one price level, but the CPI is the average price of things in the entire United States. They actually do publish more specific information for different places in the U.S., but for this, we're going to keep it nice and simple and just use national information. And then the other thing to remember is this is an average of all goods. And of course, all goods don't increase or decrease in price at the, in the same way. You know, some goods are decreasing in price, like televisions. Other goods like college are increasing in price. Um, and some things are inflating, you know, more quickly than others. College prices are rising more quickly than gasoline prices. So everything's different, but the CPI is an average of all things that the market basket tracks. And yes, they're weighted, um, but you have to remember that it's not going to tell you exactly what a price would or would have been in the past or what a price will be in the future. So that's all just considerations of accuracy based on the figure itself. The other thing to remember about this is the data are inherently flawed here. One, data collection is not perfect. This is just a sample. They're not measuring every single price of every single good or service in the United States. They're just taking a, a handful of them from across the nation and extrapolating that information to say, okay, here's what the deal is for the entire country. So that's not perfect. 
The other issue is that the items in the basket, the market basket, will change over time. Um, the reason for that is, you know, Americans change what they buy over time. You know, we used to buy things that we don't buy so much today um, for a number of reasons. Maybe they're less healthy. Maybe they're just not as trendy as they used to be. But if you're going to use that basket to compare, you know, the prices of American, the prices of things Americans buy regularly, those things are going to change over time, but that's going to skew your information a little bit. This comes up particularly with an issue called substitution bias. And the idea is this. Let's say that the market basket has steak and it has chicken in it. And this price of steak starts to rise. Well, you would think that, you know, that will make the CPI go up and up and up and up because, well, if there's steak in the market basket and steak costs more money, then, you know, you're going to see Americans pay more for steak. And the CPI would do a great job tracking that if people didn't just jump ship and stop buying steak and move to a substitute instead. So the price of steak could rise and rise and rise, but if people stop buying steak and start buying more chicken, the CPI is not going to truly track that increase in the price of steak over time. That's called substitution bias. And then also, you know, again, some items are dropped or added depending on what it is Americans buy. And then the other thing to keep in mind here is that the items themselves are not static. They change too. So televisions have been in the CPI for a very long time, you know, since the television was invented. But televisions are very different today than what they were, you know, 40 or 50 years ago. They have so many more features, they weigh less, they take up less space. But the CPI by itself has a hard time tracking these changes in features or changes in quality or now we're adding smart features. So the Bureau of Labor Statistics has all kinds of ways that they try to, you know, accommodate all these changes and do all these things. Um, so they, they do their best. But you just have to kind of be aware of the fact that the data is not perfect. There are some flaws based on the way that it's collected and, um, you know, based on the way that we're trying to use one single number to indicate the change in price of little, literally everything across the United States. It's not really going to work that well. So those are just some things to think about. When you are doing your inflation project, there are a number of things to see. There's a Google Doc with the full project instructions. Uh, there's a rubric that's in Schoology. There is a model that I made. Um, it's mostly complete. I didn't show my work um, on the model, but you definitely need to show your work to get credit. Please make sure that you ask me any questions that you have, and don't procrastinate till the last minute. Um, you don't have a ton of time to do this one compared to maybe some of the other projects that you've done, so be proactive. Make sure you're getting stuff done and asking questions and using your time well. Uh, so have a wonderful day, and thank you for watching.